Ladies and gentlemen, I'm pleased to welcome you to Zermatt or Zermatt, uh, like we'd say in German, in, in Switzerland, which is uh, where the, the name of our company comes from. Uh, you see the, the Matterhorn uh, behind me, that, that's uh, Matterhorn Asset Management, that's where, we, where it all started. Um, I'm sorry not to be able to be with you uh, in person in Munich, which is a lovely city. At least we can we can talk to each other this way um, because the next few years are going to be probably some of the most difficult years in, in history of, of economics and financial history. And it's very important to understand what could happen and how we're going to navigate that. So now I'm going to minimize myself up in the corner here so you can see the slides. So you have to. Excuse me for a few seconds. There we are. I'm smaller now. And um, so uh, I call this explosion an implosion. And, and you will so soon know why. Um, let's just move to the first slide here. Liftoff. Liftoff or, or uh, uh, melt up is what we could see in the next, uh, uh, let's say, six to 80, 18 months. Um, and why is that? Well, because what's going to happen now, what I, is the, what I call the final hooray, I mean, this is, a, you know, bull markets, and this is a very long bull market, you know, you can say that it's in, since 1913, the Fed was created, um, and, and the, the money printing really started, um, or it could be even a, a two, 300 year old uh, bull market or, or a cycle, or even as far back as 2000, doesn't matter we are going to see in the next few years the end of a massive bull market. Now, I'm, um, you know, I'm recording this before the US election. Uh, and uh, of course, uh, there will be massive volatility in the next few days or in the next week or so, depending on the outcome of, of, of the election uh, and, and the actions that the various parties will take. But as far as I'm concerned, long term, let's say in the next four years, it doesn't really matter who is the president. Biden will probably print more money quicker, but both of them have an um, impossible situation to deal with um, and nobody's going to be able to sell, solve the problems um, of the US in the next few years and, and the massive debt. So, but before that, they are going to print, uh, both of them or either of them, unlimited amounts of money. And that's why we could see now the final hooray or the final fanfare um, in markets where stock markets even double. You know, the Dow could actually go from 20 or a bit over 25,000 to, to even to 50,000. And that sounds ridiculous in a market which is already massively overvalued. But you know, that doesn't stop the market from going a lot further, just like the Nasdaq did in, in 2000, where it doubled in, in, in the last year before that, 1999. Um, but you know, more importantly, because you, of course, uh, like myself, you are uh, belong to the converted. You understand what's happening in the world. You actually uh, understand the importance of gold and, and, and mining stocks. And of course, the market which was really exploded is, is mining stocks. So we'll come back to that. And of course, so will physical gold and silver. Um, and as I said, you know, we might see this in the next, let's say, six or nine to 18 months, this period of what I call the, the final hooray, the final blow off in, in markets. But, but, we got to be careful because the risks are enormous. Markets are already in bubble territory, stocks and bonds and property, they're all in bubble territory. So I would be very careful in being in the general stock market because there is always a risk that it could turn any time. So better stick to the things that we know, which is precious metals and precious metals mining stocks. Now, so what is causing this all? Well, you know, the, the uh, people are blaming the coronavirus for the problems in the world right now, but that's not the pro. That is not the reason why, why we're having problems. Coronavirus was just the catalyst. The real problem started in, in August, September, 2019, when, when uh, the Fed and the ECB basically indicated that there are problems, massive problems in financial markets and, and in the financial systems. And they started printing massive amounts of money. Um, and this is what we see in these graphs. These are the central banks. Uh, the red one is the Fed, the, the, the blue one is the ECB. And you can see how, how the Fed from 
the red one from the late 2019 has just gone straight up exponentially. And the same with the ECB. You know, there the ECB is approaching eight trillion dollars in this case, eight trillion uh, balance sheet, uh, and the Fed is just over seven trillion, having been only about three point four trillion back in in August 2019. So money printing has now gone exponential, and this is just the beginning. It's going to be it, it, the way I see the markets, and the way what the only way that the president can solve a debt problem is sad, sadly by more debt. They're not gonna solve it, of course, but that's the only method they know, and that is the only method they will apply. Uh, and this is why, you know, this uh, red arrow exponential, we, we're going to see these balance sheets grow much, much, much bigger. Just looking at the Fed, you know, the, the real problem started in 2006 to nine, you know, that the, the, the the crisis, the, the great financial crisis then um, had ended in 2009, but it didn't end. It actually just was temporarily, um, you know, kicked down, the, the can was kicked down the road and the problems were, were pushed off to, to, you know, 10 years later, over 10 years later, that, to, that were there where we are today. The, the underlying problems of this are still there. The, the debt problem, the, the problems in the financial system, the problems in the banking system. Um, and you know, this is why if you think that it ended in 2009, but 2009, uh, if you look at the Fed's balance sheet here, 2009, it, it was uh, 2 trillion, having gone from under um, only 830 billion in 2006. So it was 2 trillion. So if the problems were solved in 2009, so why has the balance sheet gone from 2 trillion to seven trillion today? Well, I'll tell you why, because there are problems in the system. So since the great financial crisis started in 2006, we're actually seeing debt having gone up, uh, the, 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 or the debt or the federal uh, reserves balance sheet gone up eight and a half times to seven trillion. And it's not gonna stop there. You know, just look what I see, look at the exponential moves in September last year. It, it's up 90% since September last year. And as I said, that's just the beginning. Now, US, the US is a bankrupt nation. It's actually lived above its means for the last 90 years. No one believes that, but that's the case. If you look at this is the, the, uh, the, the, the budget deficit since 2000, well, since 1910, but since 1930, there has only been four surpluses. They were in the 40s and the 50s, two in the 40s, two in the 50s, um, so those were budget surpluses and very small ones. And, and the, the surplus that is indicated here in the late 1990s uh, in the Clinton era was actually not a real surplus. That was fake because during that, during that period, the debt continued to grow. So they just f f fiddled the figures and, and, and took some from, from below the line and put above the line. Uh, so there were actually real uh, deficits even in that time. So here you have a bankrupt country that hasn't had a real surplus since 1930. How do you think that such a country can survive? How do you think that, that such a country can actually be uh, have a reserve currency for the world, the dollar? Well, the, the dollar is certainly not going to be a reserve currency for very long. That's, that's clear. And now you're looking at the major deficits here. I mean, this year, we are lo looking at, uh, or the financial year that just ended for, for the US, looking at a deficit of about three and a half trillion. Now, I wrote an article already when, when Trump was elected and, and I said deficits uh, uh, and, and debt are going to, to, to grow exponentially. And if you look here since Reagan, every eight years on average, the US debt has doubled. So, so, um, if you look at, for example, Obama, he left when, when he left in January 2017 um, and, and handed over to Trump, he handed over a debt of 20 trillion, having doubled it from the previous president Bush from 10 to 20. And he handed over 20 trillion. So, you know, it's very easy. You don't need to have a big budget office and thousands of people calculating what's gonna to happen to the economy. Just look at history and extrapolate. Nobody does that, but history teaches us so much. And history here told us or told me certainly that debt is gonna double. 
uh, uh, for, in the next eight years. We don't know if, if Trump will be, uh, when I did this, we did, didn't, don't know if he was going to be the president for eight years, but certainly for four years. So if it continues at the same rate, the, the debt would have been, would be now at the end of this year or January 2021, when he takes over, will be 28 trillion. Well, you know, funnily enough, it's 27.1 now, and I'm convinced it'll be 28 by, by January. Uh, so nobody believed that, that, you know, we would see a 7 trillion increase in four years. But that's what history told us. And that also indicates that we are going to go to at least 40 trillion by the end of the, of the new president's period. 40 trillion, i.e. that is doubling from 2017. So that is, I think that's a minimum. We, it could be a lot more if, if the problems in the US economy really take off um, and also if the financial system goes through what I think an, a massively difficult period. Uh, now, just look at the, um, what creates, why do I think that stock markets could continue to boom? Because as I said, we, I think we will have this final melt up. And you can see here, the blue line is the total assets of, of all the central, major central banks, the Fed, the ECB and the Bank of Japan. Um, and the red line is the S&P. And, and if you look at the here, since 2008, I mean, they have just gone totally in, in parallel, these two lines. So, so markets follow debt or money printing. Um, and so since that's going to now go up exponentially, it's, there is also a good chance that, that stock market will also go up exponentially for a while until everything turns because you know, you can't just live on printed money, of course. Now, the, we looked at U.S. debt because we, U.S. is, of course, the, the financial engine of the world. Uh, but if we if we look at global debt, it's the same situation. In nineteen in the nineteen nineties, global debt was eighty trillion, uh, and then when the great financial crisis started, it was one hundred twenty five trillion, and 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 today is two hundred and eighty trillion and increasing rapidly so that is you know you're talking about here debt um, of, of uh, global debt being 285 percent of global gdp that is totally unsustainable but so here i put 2025 debt could be two quadrillion well how is that possible how can we go from 280 trillion to two quadrillion you will ask well i, I will tell you why because first of all we have unfunded liabilities uh, and and uh, it, it, of, of probably 500 uh, trillion worldwide. Uh, but then above that, we have one and a half quadrillion of derivatives. And these derivatives only function when markets are strong and when markets are solid and when markets go up. Um, when the financial system starts weakening and, and failing, the, the uh, derivatives are going to fail too. Because if in order for, for the two quadrillion to, or one and a half quadrillion derivatives to remain outstanding, counterparty has to stand there and, and fulfill its obligations. But if counterparty fails, the gross, um, the gross derivatives will remain gross and that has to be financed. And, and so that means that a, 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 at least one and a half quadrillion will have to be printed by central bank just to buy up all the derivatives, which will be collapsing very quickly um, as the problems in the financial system start. So that's why we could even go to a debt uh, worldwide of two quadrillion and, and more. Of course, if that, all of that is printed, you know what's gonna happen, especially the, uh, the, uh, the, the German people who, uh, who listen to, or German investors who listen to this, they've been, you've been through uh, hyperinflation before, and this is clearly the beginning of hyperinflation when we go to over two quadrillion debt. Now, the US debt, uh, total debt, I'm not talking about the, the just the, the, uh, the, the federal debt, but, but the total debt, including cons consumer debt, is 85 trillion today. But, uh, but just look, let's look back here. In 1970, just before the, the gold backing of the dollar was taken off, that, that debt was one and a half trillion dollars. So debt has gone from one and a half trillion to 85 trillion. Um, 
And so that's up 56 times. And look at GDP. GDP back in 1970 was $1 trillion and is today only $21 trillion. So uh, GDP is up 21 times and debt uh, up 56 times. You can see it's totally unsustainable. The gap here between, between the white line, which is debt and GDP is just growing bigger and bigger. So what that means is that in order to increase GDP, more and more debt has to be uh, printed uh, uh, in order to sustain the economy. So this is not real growth. This is just growth based on, on debt, not real uh, growth in real terms based on work and production of assets. And that's why it's totally unsustainable, of course. Now, so at some point, if we get this explosion I'm talking about, or this melt up in markets, it's going to end because we will get the, the, the additional debt will be totally worthless because if you print money without any, any production or any labor being produced for that money, that money is worthless. And therefore one day the market will wake up and say, <clears throat> the emperor has no clothes. Um, and this money is worthless. So then we will see the beginning of the implosion of markets. And that's going to be a very, very difficult time for the world. Now, the, the, you just look, so that's when stock market from having maybe doubled, maybe doubled, it's not certain, but, it's, but if it does, that's when stock markets then in real terms are going to collapse. And of course, the best way to measure stock markets is against gold, real money, the only money that has survived for 5,000 years. And you know, here is the Dow gold ratio, the Dow Jones divided by gold for, from 99 to, to, to 2020. Um, and you see it's already down 70% in, in um, the Dow against gold since 99. So, and, and although everybody thinks that uh, you know, stock markets have performed extremely well in this century, if you look at this, they haven't, because in real terms, if you measure it in real money, they're actually down, the down, it's the same with all markets, they're down 70%. Um, and not only that, but you know, now this, this ratio um, has, it was in 2011 even lower, but uh, I believe that we are going to go back to, which is not shown here, we're gonna go back to at least the 1980 ratio, which is one for one. The Dow was 850 and gold was $850. So that was a one for one ratio. And I think we're going to go even below that to maybe half for, uh, for one or even less. That means that the Dow in real terms against gold will fall at least 95% in the next few years. Just think about that, 95%. So don't have your money in the stock market. You're going to lose a lot of money if you do. So, so, so that's the stock market and the other thing you know, the US has always talked about the strong dollar and the strong dollar policy. Look at, look at what Nixon uh, created for the world, uh, because it's not just that this is the dollar against gold since uh, 2000, just since 2000. In, 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 at the beginning of 2000, the, do, uh, the gold was $288. Um, and today it's uh, just on, on, well, just on around $1,900. So, that is a fall of 85% in real terms just since 2000. And of course, most other currencies have done the same. Now, um, it is obvious that this trend will continue and accelerate in the next five years. So I would expect that the dollar, uh, in, uh, gold in dollar terms, or the dollar will reach zero uh, and gold will go up exponentially. If, if dollar reaches zero, of course, it won't be exactly zero, but it will lose may, maybe 90 5% of this value now, which means that gold in dollar terms is going to go up uh, exponentially. Now, uh, money, when money dies, well, money, money is dying. Uh, nobody's seeing it because governments never tell you what happens to your money because they never tell you, uh, they never uh, measure it in real terms in gold. Uh, but here you see uh, since 1971 uh, and then 2000, 2020, what, what um, the, their currencies have done um, against real money, against gold. So if you take uh, in, in 2000, well, let's take not from 1971 to 2020, the, the right-hand column here, 
old currencies, dollar, uh, the, the mark, euro, uh, the, euro the, the pound, and the yen, they have all fallen 94 to 98% against gold in, 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 the la in the last 50 years. Uh, and only in this century, all the currencies have fallen more than 80%, 80 to 80, 88%. So, you know, the trend is clear. This trend is not going to stop. It's not going to stop until the currencies reach zero or near zero. Um, and that's what happened, for example, to, to, uh, to the, in Argentina, where, where the currency has lost virtually all its value. And that's only since 2000. Now, this is probably one of the greatest opportunities that we're going to have in the next five years, 10 years, even longer. Uh, this is the commodity, this is Goldman Sachs Commodity Index uh, against the, the S&P um, Standard & Poor's Index, US Index. And as you can see here, uh, so this is since 1971, and we've had major fluctuations uh, when at the peaks here uh, in 73-4, the oil crisis and then the Gulf War and then the great financial crisis, commodities were uh, at a high level against the stock markets. Um, and, but right now we're looking at here, you know, at all time historical low uh, of commodities against stock markets. And this is what's going to turn now in the next few years. And uh, we are going to see the most magnificent rise in, in, in commodities. Uh, and of course, uh, the real stars here will be gold and silver. Um, and I would uh, you know, expe expect commodities at least to outperform stocks by 20 times, or probably even more in the next five years, seven years. Now. Inflation is coming. Nobody sees it yet. It is coming. Uh, until now, the, the money that's been printed hasn't reached the people uh, and, and is not measured in normal consumer inflation. It, we have massive inflation in assets, of course, in stocks, bonds, property, but that's not measured. Uh, but in, it is now starting also in, in real terms. And here we see, for example, commodity index that just uh, since April this year it is up 20%. So commodities now are on the rise and I would expect them to uh, accelerate from here on. Here's the next sign of inflation. Look at this, this is the US money supply M1. You know, it's up five, five times since 2000. Look at it now, it's exponential uh, since the beginning of this year or, or the end of 2019. That is also, we are now going to see that because the printed money now is starting to reach uh, the consumer before it was just reaching the banks that used it themselves or for their big clients. Now, because the consumer are getting a lot of this money to, to, able, to be able to survive because of the coronavirus. So, and that means that we are going to see now uh, this, this money being spent in the economy uh, and the, what we call the velocity of money, the, the, the times that the money spent is going to increase. And we are going to see now in the coming months and years, we're going to see inflation going up dramatically. I lived through the, the 70s uh, inflation in the UK. We had 15 to 17% inflation every year. Um, so, you know, the, the uh, inflation is, has happened throughout history. It's going to happen again, and, but, and it's going to be a major problem for the world. Now, what you're going to be prepared for, as I said, first, the, the, um, we'll have the explosion what I call explosion. This is the final inflationary rise in markets, which is likely to happen, but the risk is major, so be careful. Um, uh, and of course, the money printing is what will cause this, um, and therefore the currencies will continue to be debased. So I warn you, don't hold any money in the de in debasing assets, i.e. In, in dollars or in euros or in pounds. If you're holding your money or having the money in the bank in these currencies, you're going to lose every day in the next few years in real terms. So therefore, don't hold your assets in, in, in more than you know, very small amounts of, of, of uh, you know, fiat money or paper money. Hold it in real assets like in gold or silver um, or, or other real assets. So, so the hyperinflation is going to start uh, 
Uh, now, first with inflation, or certainly in the next couple of years, we're going to see inflation accelerating. So, as I said, when the what what I expect to see, so when markets, it could be six months, it could be up to eighteen months, when when markets have gone up dramatically, let's say that the Dow doubles, um, and that's just it's not a forecast, it's just a, a potential uh, that it does uh, due to all the money printing. Um, of course, that is not a real gain. That is just a gain in the market based on printed money um, and p just that printed money goes into the stock market uh, and pe people are, are, are just good, you know, and the normal investors are not buying gold, as you know, they're not going to buy gold mining shares, they are just going to buy normal shares um, and they are going to expose themselves to massive risk, just like the NASDAQ in the 1999-2000 period, when it doubled the last uh, in, in 99, and then it crashed 80% from 2000. And so that implosion will be in the stocks, as I said, and as I showed in the Dow, uh, Dow uh, gold ratio, in bonds. I mean, the bond market now is in the most enormous bubble. First of all, most borrowers are not going to, not even governments, uh, are not going to be able to uh, pay back uh, these debts. Um, they will just issue more. And you know, at some point, interest rates. I think they've turned already. Interest rates are going to go dramatically higher. You know, I remember, I remember 17, 20 percent in the in the 1970s, the beginning of the 80s. My first mortgage, my first mortgage was in the UK, and I paid in 1973, four. I paid 21 percent on my mortgage. For a house I bought in the UK. Can you imagine? Can you imagine 21%? How many borrowers today could pay 21%? Nobody. Nobody could even afford 2% um, in most countries uh, because rates are, mortgage rates are maybe around 1%. Or, uh, and so, therefore, you know, and when rates go up again, it's going to be absolute panic in housing markets, and housing markets will collapse, of course. Um, and as I say here, the other thing that's going to happen is that the commodity demand will be high and production will be low, um, and we will see major shortages of food, and the prices will go up dramatically. Again, that's a typical, typical scenario for an inflationary, hyperinflationary period. Um, and so you have some asset prices that, that are going to go, go up, as I said, like, like uh, commodities, food services, and then you have the, the, um, the bubble assets, the property and stocks and bonds are going to go down. So you will actually have deflation and inflation at the same time. But the thing that counts for people, the thing that counts, you know, the way they're daily living, that's going to go up in price and that will be a massive problem for, for, for the world. And of course, you know, the financial system, it's clear that it's a bubble. And it's just that bubble is growing by the day and it's going to grow uh, dramatically if this scenario is correct in the next, um, so as I said, six to 18 months. And then the bubble will burst. Uh, and we are going to see uh, uh, massive problems in the financial system. And it, it's possible that it's not going to survive, certainly not in its present form. So be careful with your, with, with your assets in the bank uh, because um, they are going to be at risk. Um, and if governments print unlimited amounts of money, you know that that money is going to be worthless anyway, because if you have money in the bank and they just print and print and print, and the money is going to be worth, not worth the, the paper is written on even. Of course, there'll be other problems in the world. There'll be social unrest, there'll be no law, law and order. That must, so there will, sadly, we will see a lot, of, a lot of problems in the world. And the, the, the difference between the, 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 the rich and the poor is too big. And, and the poor are not going to uh, accept that coming year. So there'll be, um, a, 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 as I said, major unrest, um, sadly. Now, this is one of the most important charts uh, that uh, um, you know, I, I've ever shown, because this is gold adjusted for the rise in US money supply. Um, uh, and uh, it goes back to 1930, but you know, let us look at it now. So today, gold uh, and gold price, of course, should reflect uh, the money printing, uh, and and uh, and therefore, um, you know, the, the, that that's really what gold does. Uh, if money is printed, the the gold goes up because the value of money goes down, um, and uh, 
Now, so the goal today in, in relation to US money supply in 2020 is at the same level as it was in 1970 when gold was $35 an ounce. And in 2000, when gold was just under $300 an ounce. So gold today is a cheap, as, as cheap as it was 50 years ago and 20 years ago. So this tells you the potential. You know, this is what you're seeing here in the, the peak in 1980, uh, but that's going to be surpassed. And, and you know, gold is just uh, going to go up uh, in, in relation to money supply. As money supply grows, gold will go up even faster. Um, and this is why, you know, now if you buy, if you don't own gold today, you are still getting it now at $1,900 at, at, a, at an absolute bargain. Now, this is an interesting cube from, from the World Gold Council. Um, and I, I'm showing this because of, of, especially because of how I see demand and institutional demand for gold coming. Now, so this is all the gold in the world. This is a cube which is 21.7 meters um, cube. So each side is 21.7 meters of the, that is of the, of the beige area and not the below ground gold at the bottom. So that's all the gold in the world that uh, can actually um, can actually uh, take be filled in a twenty one meter cube, which is uh, incredible, really. So that represents twelve trillion dollars, one hundred ninety seven thousand tons. Now, of that, uh, you know, most of it is jewelry, of course, uh, and central bank gold. But then we have private investment gold which is only 43,000 tons out of the 197,000. So that's only $2.6 trillion, which is absolutely nothing. And, you know, if you take all the investment assets in the world, which is all the financial assets and the property assets, they are estimated at about 500 trillion global assets. Um, and if you say, you know, my view is that institutions, pension funds, uh, insurance companies, et cetera, they will have to now inflation protect their portfolios and they don't own any gold today. You know, the average gold ownership in the world today is half a percent of world financial assets. It's absolutely nothing. Uh, but let us say that, that all pension funds uh, and insurance companies buy a little bit of gold to, you know, one or two percent. Well, the, as I show here, the total private investment gold in the world is only 2.6 trillion. Uh, and that is already... <laughs> That's already been invested in, so that's not free, but that's all there is uh, available. And think if, if, if all 1% of, of global assets went into gold, you you're talking, that's 5 trillion. And, and all the private investment gold today is only 2.6 trillion. So you could see the effect of institutional demand, plus of course also the, the normal investors will wake up to gold. They don't own gold today because most people don't own gold but they will work up to gold. And when they do, gold is going to go, um, of course, exponential. So they're not going to get, there's not going to be more gold produced uh, and, and it's not going to be far, easy to find sellers. The only way for these institutions to buy gold is not to pay, pay, get it at, at $2,000, but they will have to pay maybe $20,000. So when they want to uh, invest a, a billion dollars into gold in the institution, which is not big really for, for a major institution, a billion, a billion dollars, they, they will not get it at, at as I said, um, 2000 or $1,900 an ounce. They will get it at $20,000 an ounce. They invest the same amount, but, but they'll get much less gold. That's what's gonna happen. Uh, and you will see that as the gold price rises in the next few years. Now, what I call the investment of the decade is silver. We've always told our investors to be careful with silver because it's one of the most volatile, what well, is the most volatile uh, uh, metals. Uh, and, and therefore, it was, uh, as I say, it's not for widows and orphans. You know, if you want to sleep well at night, you have gold, primarily physical gold. Uh, but if you want to have a little bit of fun, see, uh, you know, the potential, uh, uh, which is going to be much greater in, in silver because the gold-silver ratio is very high now and it's going to come down dramatically um, and the, the therefore you know I, I see this is silver since 1720 uh, and you know the the the, the uh, target zone if you well 1980 
when silver reached $50 in today's money adjusted for inflation, that, uh, that $50 is now $950. So it, it's obvious that silver will at reach, at least reach the, 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 the $950, or let's, as I say here, the six, $600 to $1,000. So, and that would only, if you take the 15, 15 gold silver ratio, which is the historical average, uh, the ratio is now uh, in the high 70s, but if it comes down to 15, which is very likely, then of course that 10,000 uh, 10, gold at, at 15 was, is about $660 uh, silver. Uh, and I think 10,000 gold is, is, is clear, uh, a minimum t a target, and, and of course, all of these levels depend on the amount of money printed. So, you know, you're talking about, but I think in real terms, in today's money, even gold is going to reach ten thousand dollars, and in funny money and in inflationary money, it could reach, you know, in the Weimar Republic, gold was was a hundred trillion dollars. Uh, it's a meaningless figure uh, in in hyperinflation, but it certainly is not meaningless. If your money is in paper, because if your money is in paper uh, and gold goes to that level, the paper money is going to be worthless. At least gold protects you uh, and maintains purchasing power. And I think gold will do a lot more than that. And silver, I think you will actually find that they will go up a lot more than just by the purchasing power and be probably the best, not just the best investments, because you're not holding gold and silver as investment. You're holding it for wealth protection. Remember that against a rotten financial system. That's why you're holding the precious metals. Now, just looking at the time here. Um, so gold and silver stocks are now incredibly cheap. You know, this is the XAU index, which is a gold and silver index that, that was uh, launched in 1983. Look at it, uh, that now this is down by a massive amount against the Dow since 1983. And the index actually in real terms is still at the level, if you just, this is not the graph of the index, this is, this is the XAU against the Dow Jones, as you see up here uh, uh, from 1983 to 2020. If you just looked at the index, the index is at the same level today as it was in 1983. So the gold and silver miner index has not gone up for, uh, for the last 40 years. Uh, that's what was going to change now. And against the Dow is down 95% since 1983. So you're going to see the most, this is the, this is where you're going to put your money. Don't have it in general stock market, put it into, put it into real physical metals and put it into uh, mining shares. Now, from a wealth preservation point of view, mining shares are not the same degree of wealth preservation because you hold them in, uh, in the financial system and there is, of course, the risk that the financial system will not survive, and you will your assets, um, if they're still there, if the bank hasn't used them for security or whatever, if they're still there, then you might not get hold of them for years. So the way we look at it is that you should have your biggest amount of money in gold, a bit in silver, and then some some uh, in the mining stocks also. Uh, but uh, since they are not, uh, since they are within the financial system you should uh, limit that amount you have uh, in the system. Now let's look at the next slide. Uh, well, that's actually the end of the presentation. Uh, the company Matter on Asset Management and, and Gold Switzerland is, is the name of our website, goldswitzerland.com. And the, the company's name is Matter on Asset Management. Um, I founded that uh, over, just over 20 years ago. And we are wealth preservation spe specialists with uh, clients all over the world. We have uh, main, mainly bigger accounts in, uh, and we help people to buy and store in their own name with direct access to the vaults. Uh, so they can go on and, and, and then get the gold. Clients can go and get the gold, touch the gold, um, which is we think very important. You should not hold it in a collective uh, storage where mixed with lots of other gold. Hold your own gold bars, your own uh, gold numbers and your own sealed, uh, sealed boxes. Um, and uh, one of the vaults we have in the Swiss Alp is the biggest gold vault in the world and also the safest gold vault in the world. That vault, actually we have a minimum of, of uh, $5 million. 
but in the vault in, in Singapore or Zurich, um, that the, the, our minimum is, is four hundred thousand dollars. So uh, that is my presentation, and uh, I thank you all for for listening. Uh, the um, the let's see now let's just I'll say goodbye to you. now. Unfortunately, we can't um, we can't answer questions, of course, because um, this is not live. This is recorded. Nevertheless. Please um, come to our website, goldswitzerland.com, and there you find contact forms, how to get in touch with us. Uh, or even if you have only questions about the, the presentation, we're very happy to help you. Um, and just two final things. One, we're going to see some of the most difficult times in the financial history of the world and economic history of the world in the coming years. So be careful and be prepared for that. Protect yourselves. But then remember, you know, even if we're going to have hard times, the best things in life, or many of the best things in life, are free. You know, and and free means friends, family. That's free, and you know, that's what we, whatever amount of money you have or don't have, you go. That's what you need to enjoy. Enjoy nature. That I I am lucky enough to have around me here in, in, in Zermatt. Um, enjoy music. Enjoy books, etc. These are all free things. So. You know, we mustn't just base our life on, on financial values and financial assets, but put your house in order and protect yourself to whatever extent you can and then enjoy life because that's what it's all about after all. Thank you very much. Um, thank you very much for listening. Bye-bye.